how to choose the right Sonos speaker for you. That might be a hard question to answer because there is Sonos speakers for a different type of use. So this is why I have separated that video in type of use. Let's start with the first one, multi-room speaker. I think there is four speaker that can go inside that category. There is the Sonos One, and One and One SL is the same, except that the SL is speechless, so there is no voice control. There is the Hera 100, the Hera 300, and finally, there is the Sonos 5. And here, they are in the order of price range. So, multi-room speaker. This is made to have speaker in every room so that when you change room, when you're navigating inside your house, you have just music floating everywhere. This is the entry level, the Sonos One. It's not so expensive, it's not cheap either if you compare with the competition but I think it's worth the money, and it's a very great entry-level speakers. This one, of course, will give you the best experience. It's a hi-fi speaker, it plays very, very well, but it costs a lot of money. But the idea of having a multi-room system is to have speaker that play everywhere at low volume so you can have an ambience music instead of a huge speaker that play very loud in a room so that you can hear it in the other room. That makes it disturbing in the main room because it's too loud and that makes a poor audio quality in the other room because the speaker is too far. The ERA 300, I don't like it, I'll come back to this later, but it's a speaker that I just don't like. I think it's too expensive for the sound quality that it gives. It's not terrible, but it's terrible for the price when we compare with those other speakers. So if you're looking for a speaker that you wanna use as a multi-room system, I would say that the more money you put in, the better quality you have. This is the cheapest, of course. This one is just a little bit more expensive. That's the Era 100, and I think it's worth the money. And this one is a lot more expensive, but it's also worth the upgrade if you have that kind of budget. So I would rank it as a good, better, best. Don't touch it. Now, when we are speaking of multi-room systems, there's also something that you can do, and it's to create a stereo pair. So if you want to enhance the audio quality that you have inside your room, you can, for example, set two speakers like this one at two different places inside your room, and it will enhance the audio quality by a lot. So this is a great idea to do. And if you want to enhance that audio quality, one more time, there is ooh, the sub. <laughs> that is such a great speaker that you can add in on any Sonos speaker. It will free the low frequency job of your speaker that will make it sound a lot better. This one is the Sonos Sub. It is a very expensive speaker. It is one of the best sub I have heard from all of the, uh, of the sub brands that I have installed, it worth the money. There's also a sub mini that I didn't test personally, but from what I've heard, it play as well as this one, but it reached its limit faster. Of course, it's a sub mini. It's less expensive, but it's still expensive, but it worth it. It's not something that you need to have, but it's something really great to have. Now, let's talk of cinema speaker. Let's remove those one. Okay, so when I talk about cinema speaker, I am in fact talking about TV speaker. And there's something really important to understand, and is that not every Sonos speaker can be connected on a TV. They are the soundbar, like, the arc, like the beam that I don't have with me right now, and there is the, what's the name? The Ray. So in terms of audio quality, the cheapest is 
the ray and then you've got the beam and then you've got the arc and then you've got the amp. The thing with the other speakers is that you can't really connect them on your TV. There is no input for that. The Sonos Bar have an HDMI arc and or an optical input so that they can be connected on your TV. Otherwise, you might end up to find a way to connect them, but you, you won't like it. The other solution, if you have like, I do have uh, huge uh, loudspeakers, you can use the Sonos amp to connect any regular speaker. So if the Sonos Arc, which is the best Sonos speaker or, and the most expensive one is not enough for you, you can get the amp and connect the speaker you want on it. You can also connect uh, a, a regular sub or the Sonos sub on it. On any bar, you can also connect the sub. And in fact, I said that it's a really good idea to add a sub to the other speakers for the multi-room system. But when we're talking about the soundbar, I highly, highly recommend it. It, it does change everything. Those speakers are small, they are thin, the, the sub does a great difference, especially on soundbar. Speaking of cinema, there's another category in which you might be interested, and it's the Dolby Atmos. That's a feature that some Sonos speaker does have. For example, those two are Dolby Atmos compatible. Dolby Atmos is a technology that send audio everywhere in your room. For example, this one, I said it just right here. As you can see, there is speaker on front, but there's also speakers on top, on the side, and they send audio through walls to ceilings and to my face to create that kind of bubble that will give me the idea of having sound everywhere around my head. I think it's a technology that is overrated. I don't say it's a bad technology, but I just say that it's overrated. If you want to have audio everywhere around your head, well, you can put speakers all around your head. For example, I think that if you take two Sonos ERA 100 and put two inside your room, it will give you something way better than this one that will give you the illusion of having sound everywhere. That being said, if you want to listen to a movie that is Dolby Atmos, that have been recorded in Dolby Atmos, or the same thing for the music, well, you can have the Sonos Beam, the Sonos Arc, or the Sonos ERA 300. They are the only three speakers that are compatible yet with that technology with Sonos. And again, when I say it's overrated, it's not because it's a bad technology. It's just that, please don't get a speaker because it is Dolby Atmos. For example, this one is not Dolby Atmos and it play way better than this one. Of course, it's more expensive, but if you put the same amount of money into this one, this one, and you pick two, still this one, which is less expensive than two like that, play way better than those two. That's why. The Sonos Arc is a Dolby Atmos speaker and plays super great, so it's a very good thing. Just don't get a speaker because it is Dolby Atmos, unless if it's really what you want. The best way to have sound all around your head is the next point, is to have a speaker all around your head, which is surrounds. So those speaker, well, it's exactly the same one that I present at the very beginning. Those four speakers can be used as surround in your kit. And I would say it's the same principle that at the beginning, it's a good, better, best. And well, if you really want to have Dolby Atmos, well, that could be a great option for surround. So you can have the arc as the, the, the main 
uh, bar in front that is Dolby Atmos with your surround that are Dolby Atmos. That will give you the best Dolby Atmos experience. Otherwise, good, better, best. I think I forget something on the previous one. Good, better, best, same principle for the ray, the beam, and the arc, uh, except that the ray is uh, okay. I would say uh, okay, better, best. In fact, don't, don't take the ray, it's, 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 I don't like it. It's, it's, it's too much of entry level. And then there's another category, the portable speaker. So this is the Sonos Move. It's made to be moved. It's connected on your Wi-Fi at home, but when you take it away, you can connect it over Bluetooth so you can play your phone on it whenever, wherever you go. It got a battery, it can last for hours. They say 11 hours on the website and it's about true. If you play at low volume, you could even go further. If you play a high volume, you will go a bit under, but 11 hour is a great number. You could also use it as a multi-room speaker, but I just think that for the money you can get better than this one. It's a huge speaker that is made to be drop, it resists to water, it is Bluetooth, there's a battery, so there's a lot of stuff involved that make the price higher, and it's only one big speaker inside of it, so there's no tweeter and those things, and it's kind of surprising. When you hear it, it's hard to believe that there is no tweeter, but there's no tweeter. It's really surprising the, the sound quality that it gives for what it is. But just having one so that you can carry it if you need, if you want to go on your balcony somewhere where you don't have any speaker, you can just take it wherever you want. And when I do have power cut, well, that's where I use it the most. That's where I enjoy it the most because I can just have still music over Bluetooth even when there's a power cut. There's also the Roam, which is like a mini move. <laughs> There's a battery, it goes over Bluetooth when you take it away. It works on Wi-Fi, it's the same thing, except that the sound quality is terrible. It's just a too small speaker. I, I just do not recommend it at all. You will not use it as a home speaker unless you really don't care about the sound quality. Personally, it's, it's a no-go and I would not carry something, even if it's very small, to have such a poor audio quality. I prefer to not listen to music or to break my headphone. And then there is Bluetooth speaker. So yeah, I told this one is a Bluetooth speaker. There is a Sonos Roam that I did not recommend. That is also a, a, a Bluetooth speaker. There is the Era 100 and the Hera 300 that are all Bluetooth speakers. They are Bluetooth speakers in a different way. The Move and the Roam are on its own when they are on Bluetooth. They are in, in, they are in their own bubble and they can talk to any other Sonos speakers. They are disconnected from the rest. Those one, they have a Bluetooth connection on which you can connect your phone, your computer or whatever Bluetooth device that you have. You connect them on those speakers and they can share the Bluetooth connection with the other one. So this means that if you already have a Sonos system at home and you had the Sonos Era 100 or the 300, you can play Bluetooth on all of your Sonos speakers thanks to one of them. If your phone or any other device is in reach of Bluetooth connection with that one. Bluetooth is a short distance connection. Note that everything that pass over Bluetooth is compressed so you don't have the same audio quality and you might realize a small delay. In fact, if you're playing a YouTube video, the delay will be inside your phone so that when you watch, there's a lip sync, so that's fine, but you may realize if you do some things that can't uh, stream the audio and sing that if you have some, like if you play a video game, for example, that's happening just right now, there will be a delay or the delay will, will be somewhere. You will have a delay somewhere. There is a delay. And finally, there is the voice assistance category. Almost every speakers are now in that category, except the 
one speechless, but this one is because that's the one. There is the move that enter into that category also, but only when it's on Wi-Fi. Same thing for the Roam. The Aero 100 and 300 do have those uh, services, except that actually at Sonos, you have the Sonos Control that is, I don't think it worth it. <laughs> there's Google Assistant and there's Alexa. Those two doesn't have uh, Google Assistant. Sonos and Google are in conflict actually, so no, they're not there. <laughs> the Sonos 5 doesn't have any voice assistance. The Sonos Amp doesn't have it either. The Sonos Arc does have it, this big guy right here, and the Sonos Beam also got it. The smallest, um, the smallest bar of array doesn't have it. That might be a great feature for you if you like to use it. I use it sometime with the Google Assistant. I control my light with that and I ask for timers and those kind of things. I could live without it, but I enjoy it sometime. And finally, there's another point that I would like to address and it's the SonosNet speakers. SonosNet is a network that can be created by a Sonos speakers. It can be created by any Sonos speakers that have an ethernet connection at the back, like this one, that ethernet connection. I've got ethernet connection on the Sonos 5, I've got one on the Arc, and I even get two on the Sonos Amp. So any of those speakers that are connected with a Ethernet cable through to your router or your network switch will create that Sonos network. And this will let other speakers connect to that network. It's not Wi-Fi, it's on the same frequency, but this one have a mesh network. So if you have a huge house and have some room or some place of the house that have a bad Wi-Fi reception, well, your speaker will be fine because they will speak to the closest speaker that will speak to the next one that will speak to the main one, which is the Sonos Net antenna. And the thing is why I'm speaking about that is that there's some Sonos speaker that are not compatible with this. So they are all compatible except the Sonos Room, the Sonos Move, and I told myself, well, maybe that makes sense because they are made to move. But the new ERA family, so the 100 and 300, are not compatible with the Sonos Net. That bugged me a little because the Sonos Net is, in my head, a symbol of stability. Because thanks to that, Sonos only rely on itself to give a great network to all other Sonos devices and it works very well. Now with those one, you only rely on the Wi-Fi, same as the Move. Oh, there's something I forgot to say about the Move and the Roam. They can be paired as a stereo pair, so you can pair a Move with another Move, but the Move cannot be used as surround, neither can be paired with a Sub, because it can move, so it would break something, uh, it would break the link when you take it away and have to reconnect it. Well, so they just cut that connection. You cannot connect the move to a sub or as surround. So that makes the tour of all the category. I hope this video was helpful. If you wanna hear me about every speaker one by one, there is a video in the upper right corner. Otherwise, if you have any question, you can ask in the comment below. And if you're ready to buy a speaker, you can use the link in the description. If you use it, thank you, I do a commission out of it. So, this said, thank you, and I hope to see you soon. See ya.